house and home. I'm kind of getting tired and I want to go home. I'm going to leave in a twinkling and I want to leave.
Tonight I'd like to introduce to you our speaker, and his name is Brother Brady Rochester. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you know him. Uh, he is actually, if you've enjoyed the singing this week of Mary Beth and Andrew, uh, he is Mary Beth's uh, father. And uh, so we've been knowing this family for quite some time, become good friends with him. And so I introduce to you tonight Evangelist Brady Rochester. Hello, Eastside Baptist Church. This is Brady Rochester coming to you by way of the internet. Thank you, Pastor Perkins, for allowing us to do this. Looking forward to seeing you folks personally, hopefully in the near future. If you got your Bibles today, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 22. 2 Kings chapter 22. I'd like to preach on this thought today. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Now, this was a uh, saying a phrase that a man named William Wallace come up with in the 1800s and he was speaking about the effect that parents have on their children and I, I believe we see this illustrated in the life of Josiah now if you know Josiah he was the son of Ammon and also the grandson of Manasseh and so if you remember those two kings of Judah, they were wicked kings. Now he had a great grandfather who was a good man named Hezekiah, and he was the king. But he had those two fathers, the father and then the grandfather that were wicked men. But somewhere along the line, he uh, got turned around, and I believe it was by his mother. Now the Bible doesn't tell us specifically, but as we read the scriptures, I believe you see that the Lord uh, specifically points out the names of these, uh, this mother and also the, the father of the mother, which would be his uh, grandfather. But so we'll begin reading in verse one. The Bible says in verse one of chapter 22, Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign and he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jedidah, uh, the daughter of Adaya of Bashkath. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the way of David his father and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Now, notice that the mother of Josiah was Jedidah, and the, which was the daughter of Adaiah. Now I believe the reason why the Bible, the Lord give us this information about this mother and most likely the father of the mother uh, was because these men or this woman and this man probably had an influence on Josiah. Something turned Josiah around. Uh, like I say, Ammon and Manasseh, they both were wicked kings. But Josiah, God, through these uh, avenue of parents, instilled something in him that he never got over. And I want to bring out about seven or eight things that I believe that they were able to influence Josiah in. And we'll find that first thing, I say that they found that uh, they influenced him with the respect for the house of God. A respect for the house of God. I find that in verse 5, if you look with me in verse 5. The Bible says, and let them deliver it into the hand of the doers of the work. Speaking of the house of God, working on the house of God. That have the oversight of the house of the Lord. And let them give it to the do doers of the work which is in the house of the Lord to repair the breaches of the house. And I see here that Josiah commanded this to be done because I believe he had a love for the house of God. He had a respect for the house of God. Now we're living in a day that where it doesn't seem like there's much respect for God's house. It seems like people doesn't care much about it. I know we're living in this pandemic where it's hard to congregate like we would love to, but I. I'd have to say to you and testify to you, I'm looking forward to that day when we'll be able to gather again, amen? And looking forward to that when we assemble with God's people. Boy, I sure miss that. And I hope during these times that we don't lose our respect and our love for the house of God. As soon as we're able to get back into church, I hope we'll do that and gather. But until then, we can do it this way. And I hope you're faithful to watch the programs that your church is putting out. And uh, that's way we can ways we can respect the house of God and gather with His people. Uh, but I believe, first of all, that He had a respect for the house of God. He wanted to rebuild it where the the breaches had been made, and that breaches means 
uh, places that have been tore down in the house of God. And you know, that's something we might have to do as children of God when we get back in God's house. There may be some things we need to be rebuilding. And until then, we need to spend a lot of time in prayer and reading God's word. There's plenty to do for the Lord. And speaking of respect for the word of God, I think, or for the house of God, I think about a, something that happened to a nearby church where we live. Uh, they, uh, someone broke into the house, God's house, and wrote graffiti all over the walls and uh, did about $40,000 worth of damage. And it just reminded me how people don't respect the house of God anymore. There used to be a day when uh, uh, drunkards and people that were uh, uh, away from the Lord would bypass going by the house of God because they had so much reverence and respect for the, word, uh, for the house of God. And we should be that way and always have a respect and a love for the house of God. And uh, boy, I know that David, which was a great, 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 several great uh, fathers of uh, Josiah, David was a man that loved the house of God. He loved to be in God's house. And he said, oh, that I may dwell in the house of God forever. Amen. That's his desire. And I hope that's your desire and love is for the house of God. But I also see he had a recognition for the word of God, a recognition for the word of God. Notice with me in verse 10, the Bible says, And Saphan the scribe shewed the king, saying, Hilkiah the priest hath delivered me a book. And Shaphan read it before the king. And it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the book of the law, that he rent his clothes. The Bible says that he rent his clothes and that was a way of humbling himself in hearing the word of God. Boy, that's something we need in these days, a recognition that this old King James Bible is still the word of God. And I hope during this time, you'll be referring to it more than you've ever have and believing the word of God. And we'll get to more of that in Josiah's life, how he recognized the word of God in just a little bit. But, uh, but I want to give you a few more things, not only a respect for the house of God, a recognition of the word of God, but I want you to notice that he had a reverence for the wrath of God, a reverence for the wrath of God. Look with me in verse 13. The Bible says, go ye inquire, and this is Josiah speaking to the men. He says, go ye inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that is found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because our fathers have not hearkened unto the words of this book to do according unto all that which is written concerning us. Josiah was very concerned about the wrath of God. He had a fear of God. Now, I don't mean that he was uh, afraid as like an... Uh, a monster or something you would fear or something like that but he reverenced God that's what the word means when we talk about the fear of God the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom the Bible tells us he had a reverence for the wrath of God that's something we don't have today people aren't afraid of God uh, they you know why you may say well why how do you know that brother Brady well they don't live for God they live wickedly and they make a mock of sin and if you if you watch TV much at all, you'll find that they use God's name in vain. And uh, that's something that we need to get back to is the fear of God, fearing God that we, this country was founded on, people fearing the Lord and have a reverence for his wrath. Because one of these days, his wrath is going to come upon this nation. I'm afraid if we don't repent of our sins. But we know for sure that it's coming to this whole world one of these days. And I don't believe it's very far away when God's wrath will be coming upon this, uh, this world. But his wrath is coming just because it's not come yet doesn't mean God is winking at the sin of this world and this nation. No, he's, he's uh, saving it for a day of wrath. There's coming a day of wrath. And I hope we have a reverence for that wrath. And, and Josiah was definitely concerned about that wrath that God had against their people, and I hope we'll reverence that and respect that, that there is coming a day of wrath if we don't repent, but God gives us the opportunity to repent, praise the Lord, amen. And that leads me to my second thought, or excuse me, to my uh, fourth thought here. Uh, the, he was also a receiver 
of the mercy of God. You know, uh, we'll find in Josiah's life that he repented. He repented for the sins of the nation. And uh, boy, I, I say that a lot to when I'm praying, Lord, I'm sorry for the sin of this nation, Lord. Uh, uh, I, I pray that the Lord will have mercy on us. And the Lord will show mercy on us. And, and if we receive the word of God, we realize we have a respect for the house of God. We reverence, uh, the, uh, reverence the wrath of God. We'll be a receiver of the mercy of God. And that's what we find in this chapter, verse 19. The Bible says, because thine heart, and this is, let's take a moment and just think about this. This is actually the prophet that was sent to Josiah to, to give him these words. And this is what the prophet is saying that the Lord said in verse 19. He says, because thine heart was tender and thou hast humbled thyself before the Lord when thou heardest what I spake against this place and against the inhabitants thereof, that they should become a desolation and a curse and hast rent thy clothes and wept before me. I also have heard thee, saith the Lord. Amen. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I know we need to be aware of the wrath of God, the respect of the house of God, a recognition of his word. But I praise God if we get right with the Lord, his mercy, the Bible says, endureth forever. Amen. If we'll just come to him, asking him to forgive us of our sins, he'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I thank God for that. The Bible says to come boldly before the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. And boy, I'm praying for that every day that the Lord would give me mercy and grace. I couldn't make it without God's mercy and grace. Amen. I, mercy is not getting what you uh, deserve. And that, that's what I want. I don't want what I deserve. We'd all be in hell if it was what we deserved. Amen. If we got what we deserved. But I thank God for his mercy and his grace. And, and I pray that the Lord will give it to us. He says again, let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may find, obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There's mercy that we can find. Amen. If we're just seeking. And where can we find that? At the, the altar of God. The, the altar of grace. Come to God's throne room of grace and find mercy to help in time of need and grace to help in time of need. So uh, Josiah, uh, because he was taught right, I believe, from his mother and possibly from his granddad, I believe he was, he, you know, he was taught right to respect the house of God. He was taught to recognize the word of God. He was taught to reverence the wrath of God. Because of those things, God showed mercy in, in his life and in all, not only his life, but the whole nation of Judah, the whole country of Judah there, he showed mercy on them. And isn't that wonderful, isn't that encouraging? If we encourage our children in the things of God, that God will show mercy maybe down the road to our children just because of what we taught them uh, when they were younger. But moving on, I see in Josiah's life, he didn't stop right there. He didn't stop with receiving the mercy of God. He continued to, I think, have revival in his life and in the nation of Judah. We see a couple of things in verse one and two. I believe we see a return to the word of God, not, on, not only a recognition of the word of God, but a return to the word of God. And also in these two verses, one and two of chapter 23, we're in chapter 23 now, we see the return of the word of God and, and leadership, but we also see a reminder of the ways or the laws of God. If you got your Bible there in chapter 23, look with me in verse one and two. The Bible says, and the king sent and they gathered unto him all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with him and the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant, which was found in the house of of the Lord. So we see here that Josiah gathers everybody together and starts to read the Word of God. And boy, I want to make this uh, point right here. 
when we seek after the Lord, when we're trusting in the Lord, we need to let our children, we need to let our families, we need to let those that we are around every day know that we're trusting in the Lord. I think of another king, actually uh, way before, not way before, but uh, several kings back, uh, Jehoshaphat. The Bible says he, he didn't know what to do, but he said his eyes were upon the Lord. And in these days, we need to get our eyes upon the Lord and our children, our family, our wives, our children, our our daughters and sons, they need to see us seeking for the Lord. Why do we need to let them? Because when God gives deliverance, they need to see where it come from. It didn't come from the government. It didn't come from anybody else. It come from didn't come from us, but it come from the Lord. And you know, in this pandemic that we're involved in right now, this is my prayer, that God would get honor and glory in all of this. That's my, my first prayer for this. I, I want to come forth as gold, as uh, uh, Job said. God's going to work on our hearts and our, our lives. And we can let God work in our hearts and our lives. And, and we can come forth as gold and having more of a respect for the Word of God and, and receiving the Word of God and, and uh, letting our children know that uh, we want God to get the honor and glory out of all this. That's my first prayer. And then also that God's people would be brought closer uh, to him through all of this. But moving on, like I said, uh, let's see, I'm thinking uh, the sixth point there and the, and the fifth point there, the reminder of the laws of God. And then the sixth point, the return to the word of God. You know, we not only need to recognize, as I mentioned a moment ago, recognize the word of God, this King James Bible to be the word of God. But we need to return to it in our lives. Live the word of God. Amen. We not, not only be, need to be hearers of the word of God, but doers as the Bible speaks of. Amen. And moving on, uh, the return to the word of God. But I also see in this life of Josiah, and I, and I am reading uh, quite a bit. I'm hoping I'm not losing you by covering so much scripture. But this is what we're going to have to turn to is the word of God. Amen to help us in these days. But I also see in the life of Josiah a resolution of service to God. He resolved to serve the, the Lord more than he ever had before. And I find that in verse three of chapter 23, the Bible says, and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant, and that's King Josiah, of course, made a covenant before the Lord. And that covenant means an agreement, a, a promise, he says, to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. So not only Josiah uh, resolved to serve the Lord more faithfully, but all the people. What I'm hoping in these days that we're living that people will resolve to serve the Lord more than they ever have. Serve the Lord, the Bible says, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, with everything you have, serve the Lord. And the Bible says to love the Lord with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might, with all thy strength. And I believe if you love the Lord in that way, you'll want to serve him and resolve to serve him more than you ever have and better than you ever have. I hope you'll make that resolution in your life as a father, as a mother, as a child, I, I hope you'll resolve um, to serve the Lord more than you ever have. And I see Josiah did that as a result. You know, one step leads to the other. He began to have a, a, or showed his respect for the Word of God. He had, he had a, a recognition of the Word of God. He had a reverence for the wrath of God. He received the mercy of God and he returned to the Word of God and he had a reminder of the laws of God, and then he resolved to serve the Lord. And we have sometimes these things come in steps. We need to start making those steps back to the Lord. Amen. And it reminds me of that verse. The Bible says, "Draw nigh unto God, and He will draw nigh unto you." You just need to make the step to start turning to the Lord, and He'll draw nigh to you. I think about that story of uh, the prodigal son how that prodigal son began to come home uh, to his father. But when the father saw him, 
Now, I love this part of this story. The Bible says the father began to run. The father began to run to the son. And uh, that blesses my heart to know that our father is more anxious sometimes for us to come to him than we are to come to, come to him. And that we, need to, we need to come to him quickly. I believe that prodigal son may have been walking, maybe kind of uh, maybe afraid of what timidly he was probably walking towards his father. Uh, but I, as I've already said, that verse, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find help and grace to help in time of need. There's a, a resolution of service. And then lastly today, and it may not go as long as I normally go, go and uh, I don't have you folks out there to amen me. So I'm having to amen myself. But uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to the opportunity of being with you personally. But I want to give you one more thought from this life of Josiah. And I see in, this, in his life a reinforcement of the laws of God. Now we saw a moment ago a reminder of the laws of God, a, a going back and reading the word of God publicly to his people. But not only did they read it, again, they weren't just hearers, but they were doers, and Josiah was. And we need to make sure we're that. We're doers of the word of God. Uh, there was a reinforcement of the laws of God. And I, be, I believe we see that beginning in verse four of chapter 23. The Bible says, and the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest and the priest of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring forth out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal. Let me pause for just a moment. Of course, that Baal was a, a, a heathen worship. Worshiping that was mo what was mostly a worship. If you didn't worship God, you worshiped Baal. Most of the people back in those days, which was a false God. He was a wicked uh, uh, God to follow. But he, they, the Bible says, he says, go to there and, and for the grove and for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. So we see here that he burned the gods of Baal. And that tells me there's some things that we need to, here that we see where Josiah took some things out of the temple of God. And you know, the Bible says that our bodies are the temple of God. We are the temple of God. So I believe we see here illustrated how we need to reinforce the laws of God in our temple, in the temple that God has given us. The Holy Ghost uh, is, lives in that temple. And there may be some things in that temple we have allowed to, to gather up. And I, don't, I won't start naming sins. We all have sins and Waits it beset us, but there may be some things. Ask the Lord, is, is there anything that's in my heart, in my temple, that I need to take out? And so Josiah, he started with an inward cleansing. And in these days, let me encourage you, uh, East, East Side of Baptist Church or anybody that's listening to that, to this, let's, let's start with an inward cleansing of our hearts. I, I quote this verse a lot of times to the Lord. Search me, O God. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wake, wicked way in me and lead me in the path of righteousness. Now, I may have not quoted that verse exactly right, but you get the gist of what it's saying there in the book of Psalms. But we see a reinforcement of the laws of God and it started in an outward cleansing. And then let me close with this thought. It not only was an inward cleansing, but it was an outward cleansing. It was an outward cleansing. You know, if you start cleaning up your heart inside the inward temple, there's some things that you want to, going to want to cleanse on the outside. And I'm sure all of us, especially during these days when we've had a lot of free time on our hands, I hope nobody, and I, I pray, this is my prayer, that the people of God especially won't bring anything into their lives that shouldn't be there because we have so much time on our hearts and our, uh, excuse me time on our hands and uh, but I my prayer is that we would redeem the time because the Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil we're living in evil days and what does that word redeem means to 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 don't waste it. don't waste your time during these days 
uh, fathers and mothers and children, don't waste your time. Take time to pray more than you ever have. Take time to read the Bible. And I've tried to do this during these days. Tried to read my Bible more than I ever have. I've tried to uh, almost double up on my reading and, and double up on my praying because all of us have a lot more time than we've ever had. Take these times to, to uh, search your heart. Search your heart. Uh, uh, again, the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in us. And first of all, start with the inward cleansing. And then, like I said, if you do the inward cleansing, there's going to be some outward things that you maybe uh, need to take out of your life. Maybe some things you've started watching on TV that you know that's not right with God. And let me just say this. I, I try to make a commitment in our family that we won't watch anything that uses God's name in vain. And I don't ever, ever want to start bringing in movies or anything. I wouldn't, let, I wouldn't want somebody to just walk into my house and start using God's name in vain. But if we allow that to come over the TV, we're doing the same thing. We need to watch what we allow to come into our homes. And maybe there's some things you've allowed to come into your home. But I see that uh, Josiah had an outward cleansing. Uh, and this is not popular, I know, in these days to try to live a separated life. Amen. But the Bible does say, be ye holy. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. Amen. We'll never reach that holiness of God until we get to heaven. Amen. But until then, we should be striving to live closer and closer to God. Um, somebody said, we can't live a sin, sinless life, but we can all sin less. Amen. We can all stay closer to, the God, to God. Keep a short account. With God, I want you to look with me in one more verse here, talking about that cleansing the outward man, the outward things. The Bible says, and he, speaking of Josiah, says, and he put down the idolatrous priest whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn incense in the high places uh, in the cities of Judah, adulterous. Idolatrous, excuse me, I was messing up on that word. And in the places round about Jerusalem, them also that burn incense unto Baal, to the sun and to the moon and to the plants and to all the host of heaven. And he brought out the grove from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook Kidron and burned it at the brook Kidron and stamped it small into powder and cast the powder thereof upon the graves of the children of the people. And he break down the houses of the Sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wove hangings for the grove. So we see here that not only did he, he do the inward cleansing, but he did an outward cleansing. And I trust you will take heed to these things that Josiah has done in his life. And I believe it all started, moms and dads, I believe it all started with a mom and dad that led him in the right direction. I mean, he was going down the wrong path with the father and grandfather that he had. Amon and, and Manasseh were wicked men, uh, more wicked than any of the kings before them. But Josiah, praise the Lord, he turned things around. And we can't blame things on our past. We can't blame things on our heritage necessarily. Uh, but I, I thank God that he took the heritage, the good heritage that he had. He had a bad heritage, but also I believe he had a good heritage. And he, and he took it, and as they would say, he ran with it. Amen. And he got things straightened out in his life. He got things straightened out in the temple, uh, in the church, so to speak. And let me go say one more thing about that temple. The Bible says, and David said this, he says, uh, I will look into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I believe when David said that, I will look into the hills. I believe he's talking about the temple that was on the hill. And uh, that was where he found his help, was from the temple, because that was where the Lord, went, Lord was. I will look into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord that made heaven and earth. Amen. There's help for us if we'll just look to the Lord. I hope you, this will encourage you to start making the steps to God if you've gotten away from God and, and encourage you parents to, to put this, instill these things that 
I believe his mother and his granddad possibly was the ones that instilled these things into his life and made him have a respect for the house of God, a recognition of the word of God, a reverence for the wrath of God. And because he had those things, God showed that country, Judah, the whole country of Judah, he showed them mercy. And boy, that's what I want in my life. Don't you? Is the mercy of God. He's a merciful God and we just need to come to him. We need to turn to him. And just remember the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. We have a lot of influence on this world, not just ourselves, but through our children. Now, I pray that this message was a blessing to you. Again, I look forward to seeing you folks again in the near future. May God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Perkins, for allowing us to be here with you folks virtually. Amen. God bless you.